quite interesting article and it said the square the perfect focus uh, area uh, for, for the human uh, the everything is on the sides you can see it but it's not in focus in this moment unless you move your eyes so this is probably that point uh, that's why I use uh, square format a lot I'm taking picture but uh, with my background as a graphic designer and I was painting used to paint a lot so I want to bring a little bit of uh, photo like the documentary to make it a little more uh, emotional I'm playing with that stuff it's always rich to overdone it but thanks God this digital error <laughs> so you can fix it so it takes some time, time. sometimes it works just like that quickly it's very unpredictable process Sometimes uh, I come back like in two years and three years and I, uh, to the, my photographs and uh, I start to look them with a fresh eye and I realize uh, how could I miss this one for example. It's, uh, I can make something good from it and I didn't see this originally in the time when I was uh, taking and working on, on those uh, roles. No, digital roles. Right? So this process works over and over. Sometimes I see something and I'm trying to make something good from it and it doesn't work and I leave it and come back later and sometimes it's just dead. No, I don't like the situation not because I'm afraid of confrontation uh, because I want to take picture of a person before they know how to pose to me. So it's a very natural uh, position in a person think about his or her life or... But if I ask permission on the street, it could be yes or no, but even in case of yes, it's going to be posing. It absolutely kills the idea of go deeper than just the skin. When you do the visual capturing, you're trying to bring as deep as possible uh, story and uh, about this person. And the young people is usually uh, don't have too much history. They're too, too young for that. It's a good example if a young tree it's elegant it uh, looks very nice but it has nothing to stop my eye and think about something uh, contrary when you look on the old crooked tree it's so much you can imagine it's so much story you think what this tree could see for the those hundreds of years sometimes so this is probably an analogy why I prefer to take pictures of uh, older people. Plus, I have to admit, they don't move that fast like young people, so I have time to capture them. You know, it's a very intuitive process. The, technically, you have to be ready for any second to take picture because you don't have... It's not like studio photography when you can do over and over, move it, uh, the uh, miracle happens, it's a fracture of seconds. So first of all, I have this impact, I feel it's something interesting can be. I don't think it just happened. <laughs> and I take pictures and after that, sometimes it works, sometimes not. But I don't have a luxury to stop and analyze the object. Plus, uh, taking pictures of people, I never make fun of them. I never take pictures of people with disabilities. Not because I don't respect them, uh, or homeless people. I don't do the political photography and, uh, or social. And for uh, my understanding, there are two easy targets. And it's just uh, entourage, it's not what's inside. 
So I always respect people when I take pictures of them, even they don't know about it. So I have a few photographs which I call the lucky accident. So they usually I wouldn't consider them to work on in the post-production because they're not in focus, they're smudged. But actually, I have to give credit to my wife. She took this with the iPhone in the car. It was raining and the car was, the road was very bumpy. And she looked at that and said, oh. <laughs> So when we came back home and uh, I dumped it on the uh, drive and look at this, I said, I can make it look like the watercolor. It's not like a cheap trick, it just looked like that because of water on the glass and this wild colors and life. And even it's not, uh, it's, uh, not straight, which brings some dynamic to that. So it's one of my latest photographs from our trip in March. The choice of paper when you print this is extremely important. And I fell in love in this particular paper. You can see it's almost like watercolor. It's not bright white, but it's off white a little bit. So when you print on a mat, a paper, it looks like it's a painting. And again, it's not like I'm trying to uh, make illusion of the painting. It just looks like that. Uh, I even put the name of this paper here. I can pronounce it. <laughs> it's a German paper. And I, I use it in several photographs. I like the urban environment and it's always some architectural stuff or this is a building or tower or narrow alley and this environment where people live for centuries so it usually goes together so this is probably a little different example but I just like a lot when this bus all of a sudden <laughs> got in my frame and was of course uh, sm kind of like smudged and but together with the big band extremely straight and geometrically even boring i would say it's a good combination uh, i like all those portraits and i like this picture a lot uh, it's in uh, uh, Brussels, and uh, took this picture in uh, Brussels, uh, crossing the very busy, very wide intersection. So I had a lot of technical problems to make it look uh, decent without any loss uh, uh, of quality. And, and again, it's a little bit looks like painting, but the position of this woman, she's somewhere in their past and the guy is definitely just concentrated on his food. And that frame of the window, make me, I even from the distance I was taking picture, I don't have, uh, I had only 70 millimeters lens, so it's not very powerful. And we're talking about like 200 meters probably. I didn't see their faces. Uh, I saw something interesting, I started taking picture, and when I came, started to uh, home, well, my camera has 43 megapixels, which is today's uh, standard, it's not the highest, but it gave me some ability to crop it, but it was still not enough, so I used some uh, uh, artificial intelligence software to uh, bring it even larger. Uh, but uh, oh, well, one of the, my favorite I have to show you. It's a very personal. It's very moody. I took it. To see the title. It's uh, two thirty in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I had a lot of anxiety, and it's in my son's uh, condo, and it's church across, and the snow, and the sharp leaves. All together, it's 
reflects a lot of my mood at time. I like this too, you know. I have to give credit to my wife again. She has an ability to find very interesting places. She spends a lot of time, she travels on the computer and after she takes me to the real one. And she has a lot of patience because sometimes I have to slow down and try to catch some interesting moment. So this is late night in Matera, the name of the city, and it's very interesting. You can see the, the geometrical houses goes like on the top of each other. It used to be uh, caves, which later on, late centuries, they built the facades. So it's very historical, very interesting, and all of a sudden I see this just regular family. This old gentleman trying to, I don't know what he's watching on the phone, but, and his family back. So it's uh, so something really uh, bring the atmosphere of what's happening. You know, I just see that it could be interesting. I never do this artificially, which is probably would be okay too. Uh, but I, I like the impressionistic approach because if art doesn't have uh, emotions, it's boring. Honestly, I don't like to talk about my photography too much because. And my idea, the photograph itself should talk to the people who is looking. If it doesn't talk back or person in a mood, not in a mood, it could be different uh, situations. But so sometimes I could see people just glued to that, so they see something. What kind of photography? Yes. Documentary photography, street photography I like. Um, any kind when the person can show creativity, something unusual. I always go ahead of him, and David always complain, you in front of me, you, me, cover everything, I don't see behind you any, anybody. But usually when I am in front, I see something could be interesting, and I go aside and go, look this side, look this side. And he decides, is it worth his attention or not? The day, I don't know if David told you, it was a very special day. It was his birthday. And after beautiful dinner in restaurant, we have very unique uh, Citroën, small uh, Citroën uh, private tour all over Paris. And the weather was not cooperating with us. It started raining. But anyway, the spirit, the beautiful city of light around us. And all of a sudden, we didn't expect, we were so hype and excited. And all of a sudden, Moulin Rouge. I even didn't, didn't have anything in front of me. While I get my phone and start filming, we already start moving with tent on red light. So that's how it happened. But the most important for, with each photography, I personally recall the place the mood. This one, it was very unique. It's my favorite. First of all, it's from was taken in Venice, our favorite city in the world. And we took it was ten years ago on another his birthday. <coughs> it was March. The weather was again not cooperating. It was awful, raining flood in Venice, but nevertheless, we didn't sit at home. We went for a walk, and you know the gallery in San Marco, and only one restaurant was open, and the music in the small room was light, and they play. And we walk under the rain, <laughs> two camera with one hand, another hand he hold me, and we dance. And it was magic. This one, it was late evening, a beautiful town, Lecce. 
in southern in Puglia of Italy. Uh, narrow street. And people just passigiata. They talk. And I, honestly, I didn't pay attention. All of a sudden, David stopped. To, it, it takes a second to cut the moment. And he was taking this picture. I even did notice them. David has beautiful eyes. He can notice something that majority of people pass by. That is called street photography. It people taken off guard. Not, not nobody posing. The real, real life. Cieszę się, że Was widzę. Zawsze tu jest taka cudowna atmosfera, która, która powoduje, że ma się chęć do, do funkcjonowania. No i do uśmiechania teraz, do kamery. A my chyba właśnie dlatego mamy taką przyjemność zrobienia tego, że tacy ludzie nas odwiedzają. Starczy chcieć i być. E, jaka była geneza? Jak byście wpadli na to, żeby coś takiego zrobić? Bo rzeczywiście w tym naszym małym środowisku w sumie nie było takiego miejsca. I gdyby mi ktoś powiedział, że coś takiego chcecie otworzyć, to bym może nie powiedział, że to jest ryzyko. Ale, bo na pewno bym tak ucieszył się i z radością przyklasnął, jak Marta otworzyła Artnest. Wszedłem do Artnest i pytam się, dlaczego Artnest? A no bo ja to lubię, jestem muzykiem, jestem, raduję się tym. Natomiast tutaj właśnie jest to, jest to możliwość spotkania fajnych ludzi, ale taka koncepcja w tym naszym, takim troszeczkę skosniałym środowisku, była taka bardzo rebeliancka i wyszliście z otwartą przyłbicą. Zmierzam. Gratuluję Wam w, ta, w takim razie. Teraz jeżeli do kamery, to z tego miejsca chciałem złożyć gratulacje i podziękowania ze środowiska, środowiska polonijnego tym oto cudownym dwóch ludzi z parasolem radości i szczęścia. Tak jak powiedziałeś, to chyba była y, rebeliancka i, i ja powiem od siebie nieprzemyślana decyzja. Ale doszło do tego, że no dzisiaj nie chcielibyśmy inaczej, żeby było. Ale Tomku, jak sam wiesz, robimy różne rzeczy, ty też robisz różne rzeczy, żeby móc pogodzić i tą kwestię zarobkową, możliwości utrzymywania się i kwestię przyjemności przebywania z ludźmi, rozwijania tych naszych, nie wiem, zainteresowań, rzeczy, które lubimy, tak? I, i to chyba dzięki temu działa. Ja myślę, że... E, te... Te, te chwile spędzane z ludźmi i w przygotowywaniu tego i później w celebro, celebrowaniu tych spotkań i, i tej sztuki, którą ludzie tworzą, daje tą satysfakcję chyba. Ludzie to jest ogromna siła, która rekompensuje nam częste zmęczenie, niedospanie, a długie godziny pracy, pracy, której często nikt nie widzi. To jest, to jest taka praca, którą się robi, robi, robi. I jak się dobrze robi, jak ludzie przychodzą z prawidłowymi tutaj zamiarami pokazania swojej pracy, to ludzie się też pojawiają i chcą to zobaczyć. Właśnie widzę, że ktoś już podjechał, następni goście, także będziemy witać ich zaraz. A także staramy się być otwarci dla wszystkich Andrzej. i na wszystko, um, ale na pewno, na pewno jest jakaś selekcja i... I dobieramy rzeczy, które w jakiś sposób nam też grają w duszy. A więc jednym z takich, jedną z takich osób jest... Dzień dobry. Gratuluję następnego sukcesu, wystawy. Tak, bardzo serdecznie Państwa namawiam do Studio Duel, do odwiedzania tej wystawy. Czekałem na tą wystawę i myślę, że za chwilę coś przeżyję. No, zapraszamy.
Pan Brodzki zawitał w naszych progach w lutym tego roku. Jego dwie prace były prezentowane podczas wystawy Kawa. Jest to taka organizacja chicagowskich artystów po 60. roku życia. I tak poznaliśmy Pana Brodzkiego i jego pracę. I szczerze zafascynowaliśmy się nimi od samego początku. A no i jesteśmy tu dzisiaj. Yeah, we'll see, we'll, uh, I guess we'll start with this photograph here, break it through the view. I first saw it at a gallery in Edison, a perspective gallery. And they had uh, a survey where you could vote what's your favorite picture. And somebody had already picked another picture. I said, well, this is clearly the best picture in the show. It says he captured a moment in life here. You can tell they don't know the photograph's being taken. Sorry, but it's just... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, just, it's such an extraordinary picture. It's really, it's like a painting. It looks like they're both retired. They've been a couple for a long time. Maybe their kids don't live in the house anymore. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's a moving, moving picture. It's extraordinary. I wouldn't say like this skill. He's a skilled photographer. He really knows what he's doing. There's another picture over here in the other room there called uh, uh, Lost Toy. Oh, there's a few pictures here. This one's... Uh, this, this, I like this picture too, actually, the green pond, because he's just capturing a simple moment here. I mean, it's just, it's the dirty river, but he just captured, somebody's just, just somebody daydreaming. You know, it, it's just great. I love the, the slight, the, it's not bright color, it's just a dull green, but it's just, uh, the composition is great. It's just, uh, the sternate picture, this is good, I like this. That's a classic uh, shot. Where's that? Oh, in Germany, yeah. Forgotten toy. This picture here is just, uh, it's just extraordinary. It's almost like a Fellini film, almost. I <laughs> still, it's just, I mean, he just captures it. It's in uh, well, Springfield, Illinois. Another one looks like a painting. He's got great composition there. I love how he captured the color, he captured the cat. The tree's almost coming alive like it's a person. Almost. Yeah, it's an uh, extraordinary picture. Uh, I love the one, we'll go over here and look at this one with the jazz in Italy, in Venice, Italy. This is just capturing in the midnight, midnight I'm a photographer myself, and I've, I've uh, taken a series of photos from musicians, so. I guess it would appeal to me, but he just captured. I like how it's blurred out. I like that actually. It doesn't always have to be in clear, but it's just he's captured a moment of life there. It's like uh, Do you like this it sets of... forward the imagination. Like, well, I want to go there and I want to be in this moment here. That's what the, it looks like a painting. Yeah, I mean, pictures don't always have to be in focus. They don't have to. It can lead to the storyline that it's out of focus. It's because uh, yeah, yeah. As a photographer, his name is uh, Sal Leader. And he had a knack for uh, capturing the mundane, and he has a bit of that here. He just captures some extraordinary moments in life. I'm really, really impressed by this work. I really am. Uh, any photographer can get the, you know, maybe a dramatic shot, but you have to capture the the soul of the moment. You have to be. You have to always be ready to take the picture. You might not always capture what you, your eyes going to see at the moment, but if you're always ready to take the picture, and just uh, always see if your 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 best camera is always the one you have with you. So whether it's your iPhone or your Nikon or your Pentax or well, the soul of the photograph, he's captured the soul of the moment, and that's why he just has an eye. He just you either have it or you don't. You can be the most technically proficient photographer on the planet and know everything about every paper and every camera gadget, but you either have it or you don't. I don't know, it's, uh, so so I've, seen, I've seen amateur photographers take some extraordinary pictures. My father, who wasn't not a photographer, but we have old photographs of, of him from when we were kids, and we're looking back through them, and like, wow, he had an extraordinary eye. These extraordinary pictures he took. So yeah, it's just... Uh, so you have to love it, you know. And if you take enough photographs, you're just going to get, your brain is just going to be trained 
to just get into the moment and uh, be ready with the camera. You know, you know, you know how to have your camera ready. It'll be something. I mean, getting your camera out will be, will be second nature to you. You've done it so many times, so I guess that's part of the skill. That comes with the skill and the sharpness, and you learn. And, and so I have to say, I shot film for many years, and I loved it. But with digital and uh, film photographers, I could have liked this, but man, it just makes things a lot easier. Because you can take so many more photographs and save a lot of money, because film is great, I love it, but it just costs so much, especially now. It costs more, it costs a lot when I was doing it, but now it's really expensive, so. If you can shoot film, it's, it looks different. Yeah, you know that. I know it's my sister, she's also a photographer. And she's a pure, she'll only shoot film, she won't shoot digital. I, knew, I know a few photographers like that. But uh, I've kind of, I've moved over to digital now. I still take film once in a great while, but it's just when I can afford it. Yeah, digital will forgive you because you can correct your errors a lot more easier than you can with film. Well, I remember I, do, I remember being in the dark of the film and playing with the photographs and do the dodging. And I do miss that actually. It was great fun. It was great because you, you know, the end product was uh, enjoyable. But uh, yeah. But I'll tell you what, I'm really impressed with the, the colors on these prints in particular. It's the paper, I, um, you know, there's just something about the, uh, the color is just popping right off the page. It's quite striking, you know. And then the same with the black and white with this Hannah Mule, what is it? The Hannah Mule William Turner. It's pretty, uh, it's, it's got so much... Um, depth to it you know um, and they're all quite good I mean don't get me wrong like in this one over here which one here come to my office <laughs> this one here you know it's just one of those ones it's it's on uh, quality archival paper but from across the room it looks like a painting you know and um, it just catches your eye it's I, and, and, and I think it caught my eye because I started painting recently in the last couple of years and it reminds me of some of the work that I've been doing with, especially with foliage and leaves and getting these greens and these yellows, you know, and water movement is a, kind of a big thing for me, you know. So I think this one caught my eye in particular right away, you know. And this one here, I love this one, the city life. This is a great capture right here with the, um, of him photographing who knows what it is going on over here. You know, it's like a dance party or a, a child, you know, screaming. <laughs> you, know, you can use your imagination, you know, but it's, it's a great expansion. And I never heard of uh, Matera. I, almost, I should have looked it up on the map before I started talking to you. But this is another one with the, uh, oh, this is a different, um, process, right, the crystal archive, you know, it's just, it's got a lot of life in it, yeah.
could almost say Brisson a little bit, or not Brisson, uh, who's the other French photographer that I love, um, the trees on the, on the walkway there. Um, and I have a friend in, uh, in Los Angeles, uh, Phil Parmet, and this photo in particular reminds me of his, of his work, you know, and the colors, I love the colors, and also it's in Montpellier, which is another, I have great memories of uh, holding the microwave. You know? <laughs> That's the thing, is like you would say, she's looking at something, but I feel like she's like really just part of the world, you know, there's nothing lonely about it at all, you know, she's alone, but there's nothing lonely about it, you know? These ones over here, like I love this one. This is a great capture right here. This almost reminds me of The Sopranos, you know, the TV show, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you can see those guys in the back room easily. But how he caught that, that's great. He just walked by the window. This one, you know, and the guy sees him just a little bit, but it doesn't interrupt anything. It doesn't take anything away from... Uh, from this great little moment that he got here. And then it's funny, it's set up right between these two right here. And I love these, I love photographs like this of uh, architecture and angles and right angles and the light, you know, the light going from the light to the light to the light. I could paint something like this. This would be something that I would put my brushes on too, you know, and this one too. And the other one that I really love, it's just the only, I mean, I love them all. But I had just, well, that one's magnificent, that one there. But that reminds me of uh, William Wegman, you know, or a little bit of Hopper. But then the Hopper one, there is one that really reminds me of, and the, it just strikes me. It's like there's something about it. You get into the eyeball here, and you can see the whole stable reflected in the eyeball. It's really quite a... And the simple colors being trapped between the two red bars. And then mixed in with the untold amounts of shades of brown. That's a really great photo. I, lo I just love that one. That's a great, that's a great, great photo. But it's on that, um, well, this is the archival digital, right. But the, the subtle colors, you know, they're just, it's, this is a great one. I, it's unusual. It's very unusual. But then, of course, this one over here, the Marrakesh, this is, this is probably one of my favorites because there's just so much detail, so much life in this photo, right? You've got this contradiction of the brand new clean blankets, then this old, old wall. And you know, who knows how many thousands of years of people walking up and down these stairs, right? And then you look in here, you got all this dirt and cigarette butts and bottle caps, <laughs> you know? And then the two juxtapositions of the colors and then the wires, this is what I love about going to um, Africa or India or something, you know, like a place like that, where you just see these impossible configurations of uh, electricity. You don't know how does the power even work, you know? But then my favorite part is, look at this little detail. Here's a Vespa right here, parked up here in the little balcony next behind it. Isn't that amazing? And you're like, how the hell did they get the fucking Vespa up there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right? And then this little painting right down in here. But, and this is when I looked and I said, it is this Hannibal uh, uh, William Turner paper. This stuff is, a, this is really good paper. He made a great choice. Great choice for him to um, put these prints on this kind of paper. So, and then of course, this is a classic shot. This is two guys just talking. That's, that's, that's a street photographer's any street photographer is worth his uh, salt is going to say that's 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 a great and the and these three I love these old senior citizens over here they remind me of that movie what's the movie with the three old guys that robbed the banks the character actors are all in it that's what it reminded me of but this is you know that's timeless right there right that's sleeping yeah Right, the room with the view, and then this one, they right, right. Them. They're not necessarily looking at the camera. They don't know they're being photographed. Right. So you know he's quick with the camera. He's, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, he's quick with the... <laughs> well, it's interesting.
interesting. He, and this, and this one, one as well, as well, the family, family talk. It's, uh, this is great. And these, extraordinary. These two, He's so good at that. These, these three in particular remind me of my friend Michael in uh, Los Angeles, the street photographer that Michael I know. Dressel. Yeah, Michael Dressel. Oh, you know, good. it's just classic good street. And this one in particular, I, you can see the story of her life right here, you know, in the hair. Look at the hands, the shoes, yeah, classic, yeah.